Who is excited to crush their goals? Who is here who has goals? I really like having this conversation in June, I have to say, because we're about halfway through the year. And it's a really good time to check in on your goals. It's a good time to talk about goals and goal setting as we are wrapping up Q2, thinking about hitting into Q3, which starts in July. And so I want to come to you with one of my favorite, favorite presentations of all time. It was really exciting for me to have the opportunity to do all of these different types of presentations because when we went through the Nutrimetrics topics and we really got to you know, expand and we got to really dream about what we wanted to talk about. This was one that was on my bucket list. And so to be able to come in this forum, which is a little bit different um, to talk about goal setting, even though it's so applicable, right? Because we're unfranchised owners first and we need to be able to build our businesses I just want to say hey to my friends on Zoom with me and Jin May, Marianne, Nancy, and Renee. Seems like my our schedules are matching up these past couple of weeks. So it's great to see you. Great to see everyone on Facebook. I will be back in Facebook also to check out the comments later on. If you're watching this on YouTube, I will stop in there also. Um, but this isn't just goal setting, this is goal setting for massive success. How many of you guys, raise your hands, have heard about SMART goals? SMART is just an acronym. So it stands for specific, measurable, okay, so we need a really specific goal. I'll take a goal and then I'll, I'll show you how to make it a SMART goal. So specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So let's just say that your goal is you want to get healthy. Well, that's not really specific. Do you want to get healthy in terms of fitness? Do you want to get healthy in terms of nutrition? Like, let's be more specific with that. What is a measurable part of that? Is it that you would like to make sure that um, you lose 10 pounds? Do you want a certain body fat percentage? If we're talking about nutrition, is it that you would like to, you know, start every single day, Monday through Friday with a healthy breakfast? So it's got to be measurable in that way. It's got to be attainable. You're not going to drop, you know, 25 pounds in three days. You're not going to, you know, all of a sudden become a vegan tomorrow, right? So it has to be something that's actually attainable and realistic. So, you know, I'm not going to win a build, bodybuilding competition next month. First of all, I think all the bodybuilding competitions are no longer being held next month. <laughs> so, you know, we have to make something that's actually going to be realistic. And I really like that there's a start date to your goals and an end date to your goals. So let me just take a look and see if you guys have heard of this before, these SMART goals. I'm sure you've been at a local seminar, a district, you've listened to an audio, they've talked to you about SMART goals. I think that SMART goals are great. I think if we're working in a project at work, if we are um, going to, I'm going to do something like redesign my office. I'm around here. You know, I definitely want to be able to have a SMART goal. I want to know when I want to finish it by. I want to be really specific. I probably want a budget. I want something that's attainable. But guess what, guys? I'm going to show you why most of the time SMART goals don't work work. Have you guys been making smart goals for yourselves? Have you been making goal after goal? You keep trying to lose that same 10 pounds. You keep trying to get to the next pin level. You filled out the getting started guide. You have told people about your goals. You even went ahead and you made a dream board, right? Let me know if that's something that's happened to you and if it still hasn't worked because I know that was me and I used to be spinning my wheels year after year, month after month, quarter after quarter, trying to make my goals work. And so I wanna show you, you know, some different things. One thing, first of all, that I love about goals is I love when they're all around you. I love when you're reminded about your goals. And so this is someone and it's their day planner and right in the cover, they glued right there, 
their goals right into their day planner. You know, here's another example of that. You know, putting a picture of their family, putting, you know, what they want to focus on right there where they see it every single day. Yeah, having the next local challenge, having a letter to yourself, mapping it out. I'm going to show you why mapping out your business volume is super important. This right here is the background of someone's computer, you know, with their goals. So why not do that and put it on the back of your computer? Why not even make it better and put it right there in your bathroom? You should be there at least once a day, you know, staring at your goals right across from you. I like mine um, on my mirror. So I go ahead and have sticky notes because I really love ripping them off and crumpling them up and throwing them away once I do that. And then I see those every single day. And so that's my goal setting system to be able to see this all the time. So I think it's really important. But I wanna start with a conversation about where are you getting your advice from? And in Market America, with Nutrametrics is a division of, we get paid from the Management Performance Compensation Plan, the MPCP. We get paid when the people we manage perform. We don't get paid on people, we don't get paid on levels. If you listen to J.R. Breidinger last night, he was talking about how this is not multi-level marketing. We get paid on the performance of people. Are people gonna listen to you as a coach if you don't have coaching yourself? I think that that's really important as well. If there's some area of life that you're not excelling in, go ahead and get an accountability partner. Go ahead and get a coach. Just recently, um, I felt like my routine was a little bit off. I was struggling with my fitness, trying to keep up with my kids. And after you know, 10 months of pregnancy, nine or 10, depending on who you talk to, right? Um, after pregnancy, I, I had to be able to run around this summer and chase after my kids and pick up the other ones and put them down. And so I, I texted a girlfriend and I said, hey, let's make a pact that twice a week, at least we're gonna jump on and we're gonna work out together. And so we're three weeks in. You know, so when I have an area that I'm struggling in, I find someone else. You know, when I know I need to build to another level in my business, I get on the phone every other week with Dennis Franks. You know, we talk together. We started just this week. How's your business going, Sarah? What do you need help with? You know, so the best coaches have coaches. That's one thing I've learned in my corporate position, being able to, you know, hobnob just not with my own senior business partners, but with really the leaders in this company all around the country. I found out that they all invest time into, you know, hearing people's opinions and getting coach coaching from people who have done it before. People have gone before them and have been successful. So think about that. Think about, are you, get, are you taking the advice that you're giving to others? All right. This is the crux of why traditional goal setting doesn't work. Most people just go right ahead and make their goal. But the goal is the end result. You're not gonna make the goal and then all of a sudden it's gonna come into fruition. Now, yes, I do believe in a little bit of magic. I believe in a little bit of woo. You know, I do think that what you speak into the universe is gonna come back to you, but it's not as simple as rubbing a magic lamp and poof, it happening. And if that's what you've thought about your goals, if that is you writing down right here, you know, hitting the next challenge, hitting the next pin level, you know, master UFO, Sam, if those are your goals, your weight loss goals, your nutrition goals, your lifestyle goals, finally being able to take the kids to Disney, paying off that debt, whatever those goals are, let's take it down. Let's, let's like an onion, let's peel off the onion, okay? Goals are really what's at the center. What is right beneath those goals? Well, it's your beliefs. Let's talk about your beliefs. Do you believe that it can happen? Do you truly and absolutely, are you convinced and convicted to the business, to you know, whatever your nutrition goals are? Or do you have that still that little voice in your head that's contradicting and saying, mm, I don't know if I truly believe. Let's think about that. 
Because if you don't truly believe, your goal's not gonna come true. So how do we believe? Well, we can brainwash ourselves with audios. We can immerse ourselves in nothing but, you know, this way, this business, this lifestyle, whatever it is that your goal is. You know, if my goal was to lose weight and maybe I didn't truly believe I could lose weight. Maybe I didn't believe I was someone who deserved to lose weight. Maybe I didn't believe I was someone, you know, who was athletic. Maybe I was told when I was younger, you know, sorry, you should really just stick with drama. You're not really going to be a division one athlete. Oh, Sarah, that, that's so funny that you keep striking out. You're a lot better on the bench than you are up at bat. Now, I didn't really always believe I was someone that was going to be athletic. My brothers were athletic. Sorry, you're really smart. You know, I had to believe that I was someone that could be an athlete. When I did that, you know, a lot of my fitness goals just changed for me. Right? So what do you do to be able to believe you got to work on yourself? This is, you know, meditation. This is, uh, go, go pull out any of Lauren Reininger's keynotes. You know, where she says, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and you have to tell yourself, you can do this. Do that kind of mirror work. That'll rock you for sure. All right, what's, what's one level below beliefs? Well, do you have the skills? Maybe it's a skill set. Maybe it truly is a skill set that you're lacking. I tell you guys, as Nutrimetrics consultants, if you make three phone calls in a row and you get a no or a weird response, you book a conference call with me. Let's figure out. Maybe it's some kind of skill that you have. Maybe it's something you're saying. You added something to the script that wasn't supposed to be there. You know, it's it, really sales is like baking a cake. Have you guys ever, I've done this before, substituted by accident the baking powder for the um, baking powder for the baking, let's see, soda. You guys ever swapped those before? And you're, you're like, what happened to my cake? <laughs> Baking powder and baking soda, not the same thing, right? It's like a chemical reaction gone bad. So, you know, think about that. Maybe it's just something that you swapped out by accident. You didn't even realize it. You were busy looking the other way. You had kids running around under your feet. That's what happens with my baking skills. You know, so what that could be the same with the business. It could be that you're missing a skill. Maybe there's something, you know, that you're doing. Have someone watch you show the plan. Have someone sit down and make phone calls with you. It might be a cooking skill. If, again, if it's a nutrition goal, a lifestyle goal, there might just be a skill that you're lacking. So that's easy. But what is your behavior? Let's talk about your behavior. When Elizabeth Weber started this business, she would not go to sleep until she talked to 20 people that day. That was her behavior. She rearranged her whole day, her whole lifestyle to make that happen. As she kept talking to people, her skills got better. As she was closing people, her belief grew. As her belief grew, she hit her goals. But what was her behavior? Let's really look at your schedule. This is a time to look at your schedule and say, are you scheduling in the business? Truly. I'm in the process of getting some dental work done right now. And... I have a couple of things I need to do to get ready for a procedure. And I check in with my dentist every other week. And I was on the phone with her yesterday. And um, she gave me an assignment. And this is the second time in a row that we've met that I said, I am so sorry, doc. I just, uh, with our schedules and with everything, I just haven't done it. I had to be honest with her. I just hadn't done it. I, I said, I, I think to do it after the fact but I have not changed my behaviors. It has been a habit that's been really, really challenging for me. And so she said, you know, have some grace, Sarah. Maybe it's that you're taking, you know, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Try to just do it a little bit. You know, taking imperfect action is better than taking perfect inaction. I am so guilty of that. Let me say that again. Taking perfect, imperfect action is better than taking perfect in action. That is totally me, totally a perfectionist. I don't, can anyone else relate to that? What is your behaviors every single day? You have to think about that when it comes to, you know, 
when it comes to what you want to achieve. Are you doing that? If your goal is a nutrition goal, don't you think one of your behaviors has to be someone who can meal prep? Doesn't that make sense? If you don't have any meal prep, if you don't have any cooking at home as part of that, I, I could pretty much guarantee that your nutrition is gonna be off unless you had a private chef cooking all your meals for you. Otherwise, you're going to have to put that behavior in. All right, what's the last thing? What's the foundation that if you don't have this, nothing else is gonna fall into place? And that's your identity. What do we start NC training with? We start NC training with your identity as a Nutrimetrics consultant, with your I am, my implement statement. Did you really embody that? Or did you create that when we were together in training and then you never went back to that? Did you believe that so much that you went and you changed your Facebook profile? You changed your LinkedIn profile. You introduced yourself differently to the next five people that you met. Do you truly believe, if you wanna be a director in this company, do you believe you are a director on the inside? You know, it, if you squeezed a lemon, let's say we take a lemon, we squeezed a lemon, guys in the chat, what would come out of a lemon? Who's still with me? Or if we took an orange and we squeezed an orange, what would come out of an orange? Juice, you're right, Renee. Specifically, lemon juice. Lemon juice is gonna come out of the lemon. Orange juice is gonna come out of the orange. Whatever's on the inside, when it gets squished and it gets squeezed and it's put under pressure, that's what's gonna come out. Because a, a lemon is a lemon. That's its identity. An orange is an orange. What's inside of you? What's inside of you that when you get pushed and you get squished and you get squashed, what squeezes out? Because what will squeeze out is your behavior. What will squeeze out are your skills. What will squeeze out are your beliefs. You will hit your goals, but you have to have it on the inside first. Let me give you another example of what I mean by identity. So identity, who here this morning drank coffee? I have to say I'm a little bit yawning because I still have not drank my coffee this morning, but I do drink coffee every morning. Which one are you? Are you, I'm, I'm the one at the top. I'm the black coffee drinker with a little bit of mocha tonics in it. Just a little sprinkle. I love that little sprinkle of mocha tonics. I'm on, a, I'm on cappuccino flavor right now. Or are you one that basically you have a splash of coffee with your milk? Or are you not a coffee drinker? Are you a tea drinker? And that's what you have. You know, whatever you had this morning to drink, maybe it was none of the above. That is because that's your identity. That's your identity. You are a coffee drinker. You know, there's someone on this who's watching this right now and they didn't have any coffee. They're not a coffee drinker. That's not their identity. So to change any action you want to change, you have to change your identity. You have to. That's what you have to do. You know, and you, you didn't, you know, you didn't drink coffee because you're not a coffee drinker. That didn't happen. So what identity do you need to be a successful Nutrimetrics consultant, to be a successful business owner, to be a successful entrepreneur? You know, whatever it is, you have to identify with that. Just the same way that there's coffee drinkers, there's non-coffee drinkers. There's coffee with milk drinkers, there's black coffee drinkers. It's just your identity. That's all. That's all it is. And that's going to change what your actions are, which is going to get you to your goal. Focus on who you want to be. Are you someone who masters the basic five? Someone who is mastering the basic five is who you want to be. Someone who has that attitude and knowledge the goals and the goal statement, retailing. You have to have that identity of a strong retailer, an identity of someone who with ease and grace prospects, recruits, and sponsors, someone who has excelled in managing their organization, following up and building duplication with the ABC pattern of depth. 
I love that the background of this slide from the basic five is a car. You drive the car. You drive your own goals. You're absolutely in control. You're absolutely behind the wheel. You just have to focus on that identity, on who you really want to be. And then translate those goals into an action plan. So you know that if you want to make close to, at, or over a six-figure income, you need two organizations that qualify weekly. It's not going to depend on any one person. You're going to have to develop four leaders per leg, and then it'll be a runaway train. Focusing on that, on what you need to do. Who do you need to be? What type of person? What behaviors? What skills? What beliefs? And then you'll hit those goals. Now break it down. Break it down to what you need. Monthly is going to be your year divided by 12. Weekly, your month divided by four. Daily, your week divided by five. If you want things to change, change the goals, figure out the beliefs, get the skills with the behaviors, institute the behaviors. But the first thing you have to do is change that identity. Let me tell you another story about what I mean by identity. This is um, right here. This is a, a depiction of Babe Ruth in the 1932 World Series, all right? And people are still here imitating this scene where he said that he pointed as to where he was going to hit a home run, and he did it into the center field bleachers at Chicago's Wrigley Field during game three, fifth inning at bat in October. He pointed there and said, that's where I'm going with it. He had that identity of being someone who was going to go right there and win the World Series. He was there. He said, I'm a home run hitter, and that's where I'm going to hit it. And that's his identity. He had the skills, obviously. He believed he could do it. The goal was to win the World Series. You see how when he changed his identity, his goals fell into place. It's really interesting. They did a study in 1993 with the Russia Olympic athletes. And there were four groups. Group one, 100% of their training was purely physical. Wouldn't you think that, right? So this is, you know, Olympic athletes, whatever sport they were in. The swimmers swam, the runners ran, the javelin throwers worked on their strength and javelin throwing, you know, whatever it was. Group two, did 75% physical and 25% mental. Group three did 50-50 physical and mental. Group four only did 25% physical training. 75% of their training was all mental. And the scientists found that the fourth group, the group that 75% did mental training are the ones who actually performed the best in the 1993 Russian Olympics. Think about that, guys. 75% was mental to be an Olympian. I, honestly, that, this is what JR's talking about when he has the brain and he says, I am a brain surgeon. I just want to work on your brain. This is what Elizabeth's saying when she says, you have to change your stinking thinking. This is what Lauren Reidinger is talking about when she says that you have to become a hopeless success. She's talking about, I mean, there's, there's scientific studies out there that prove that when you change what is here, when you change your identity, everything else is going to be able to fall into place. That's the foundation. That's what you need to do. That's the key. That's why smart goals don't work. Yeah, you should have smart goals, but they don't work. They don't work unless you change your identity. I'm gonna follow just with my other best principles. I have three more tips for goal setting. And one of them is I say, check in with your goals. Check in with the people around you who matter. You know, I, I'm not gonna make any goal without running it by my husband, Dan. And that's because it, we make our goals together. I would hate it for me to say, you know, that I'm dreaming of a house on the beach and he's dreaming of a house in the mountains. You know, and we're making, you know, goals and we're running parallel lives. I always like to make sure 
that my goals are aligning with his goals. And I got to be honest with you. There's so many times where I check in with him and he's like, Sarah, that goal's not big enough, babe. You can do so much more. And that really always changes my identity. You know, just him looking at me and saying, you can do this. You got this. Let's do more. Let's do bigger. We can do better. You know, that really, I always see myself the way that he sees me. And I don't know if you guys feel the same way um, about your, you know, partners in life. Work within your zone of genius is what I also say. So this is Dan and I, um, we're at the top. Um, you can see, I don't know if you can see my little mouse, but um, he's in the top middle and I'm right to the left of him. And this is us. We have run, um, we have done a Tough mutter twice. I don't know. I didn't even want to do it once. I don't know how I ended up doing it twice, which is basically like a marathon length that you run, but with all these obstacles built in. I don't know. It's absolutely crazy. You get very muddy, but there's things that I couldn't physically do or even getting and climbing this wall, like just to get up to the first rope. I needed someone to hoist me up because I wasn't tall enough. And I knew that. And there were things that Dan needed me to do first because I was smaller or I could like fit and I could get through. And, you know, it's way better when you do it with a team because you all have a different skill set. And, you know, I think about that within my organization. I think a lot about this Tough mutter that I did twice by accident um, that I, you know, think about that it did take a whole team to have this major accomplishment to get to the end of this obstacle course, um, that it took all of our different skills. So if there's something that you don't have a particular skill at, go find someone who does. Mark in America, even, you know, Nutrimetrics, Mark in America, life in general is a team sport. It does not need to be an individual endeavor, an individual thing. You can get there together when you pull people up, you help people over hurdles, you work with people when they get stuck in the mud. And the other thing is that you've got to celebrate and celebrate together. Celebrate with the people that helped you get to where you want to go. Dan and I, we have a tradition that on New Year's Eve day, my mom watches the kids and we go and we do a workout that we've never done before. So we have spun, we have done kickboxing, we have done this thing called intensity, we've done um, bar classes together. This year I was um, just a couple weeks postpartum, so we went to a salt cave instead and did a little bit more of mental exercise rather than physical exercise. And we reflect back on what worked our past year and what we're really excited about for the next year. We go out to brunch after our workout and uh, we just get ready for New Year's Eve celebrations. And we take that moment to celebrate, you know, celebrate the different milestones, celebrate the successes. Because when you have massive success, sometimes there's all these little micro goals. And if you don't remember to take a moment and to say, I'm going to take this moment and I'm going to celebrate, I'm going to celebrate myself, my accomplishments, who I'm becoming, uh, you need to do that. And that's what you're going to do for massive success. So I, I really, I appreciate you being here with me today. I appreciate, um, you know, this time with us because I really hope that you think about goal setting in such a different way. And uh, I'm excited to see everyone, you know, post below with their identity, what they think they need to be, who they need to become to get to where they need to go and to follow you on your journey. I believe in you. So thank you so much.